is the awaiting time. It's the blessed time. It's a happy time. I don't know about you, but I'm so excited. Every day, we all go through some level of stress in this country. Every single day, every single time. And the Lord has prepared a vessel to bless us this morning. One of our precious sisters, one of our precious mothers, one of our mother's wife. She is a mental health counselor by profession. So who is better to treat this stress management topic than our wonderful sister with a hand of applause? Let's welcome Sister Mandu Ebowan. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for coming and your sacrifices. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Um, without wasting time, let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you this morning. We bless your name. We thank you for your faithfulness, your goodness, Lord. How you have bestowed your blessings upon us. Lord, we are coming again to tap from your presence. And we are praying that, Lord, you impart upon us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Our Father and our Lord, as we go into this topic, stress management and well-being of ministry, uh, ministry leaders and our pastors, we are praying that, Lord, things that has, as a result of our negligence or carelessness and it has brought health, ill problem to our health, we are praying that you take it away, Lord, in Jesus' name. As we listen to you, O oh Lord, bless us today. Come on, help us, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Um, before we start, I have an eight-minute uh, strip to be watched on stress management. And this month is the month of April, stress management month. So um, can a brother just put it for us to watch and go into my topic? of a lot of I don't feel good itis and they always knew they always knew something's up even when people told them or other providers told them that maybe it's in their head and that's where the word new came from because my patients always knew and then the method is just kind of a way of empowering them to know their symptoms are not in their head and that there is a way to feel better again yeah and I feel like people really resonate with you know your real world, world examples i definitely felt attacked a few times with you saying no coffee after 12 and other different things i just want to make sure you don't feel attacked these are all suggestions and wherever you land it's kind of like my platform to let people know that wherever you land on this health journey is is perfect as long as we're trying that's all we could do yeah and we're here for a very important month, um, April is National Stress Awareness Month. So can you kind of talk through, just to get us going, how would you define stress and its effects on the body? Okay, I love this question. And the reason we even have Stress Awareness Month is because we realize that this fast-paced world we're living in is creating stress like never before, and it's impacting our health. And stress, I know we know kind of what stress feels like, but it actually creates a chemical change inside of our body and that chemical change can impact us from things like high blood pressure or heart issues to weakening our immune system and everything in between and if that is not enough it could also make you look older before your time so one way or the other we have to get your stress managed right and there's an important call out here because it's not just something that is a mental thing it's also very physical Yes, it is very physical. It has, um, you know, a, a, everything in our body is chemicals. And so when cortisol gets activated, there are things that happen to it, to your body. So cortisol is meant to be temporary, you know, to get us through a temporary moment. But if we're constantly living on cortisol, it is definitely going to have our body take away from focusing on health and healing and just focusing on managing our stress. And that's when the health falls by the wayside. What would you say are some key tips to managing stress? Okay. 
So let's start with prioritizing sleep, right? Never underestimate the power of a good night's sleep. And I know this is hard for some people, but what happens when you sleep is that you get a replenished supply of cortisol most of the time. And it also gives you resiliency, new resiliency for the next day. So if you're super stressed, I know it's hard to imagine because you're anxious, but you want to get those seven to nine hours of sleep if you can. Um, another great thing is being staying active. Now, staying active doesn't mean you have to join a gym. It doesn't mean you have to, you know, start lifting heavy. It just means about 30 minutes a day of movement because when you move, you release endorphins. Endorphins are your feel-good hormones and they bring down the cortisol level. I don't know if you want me to give you some more. Oh, sure. <laughs> okay. Next on the list is mindful practices. And when I say mindful practices for some people, that's like, oh, I have to meditate. I don't have time. It's really not that. I mean, if you're someone who meditates, that's great. But mindful practice takes a second, takes a moment. It means taking a moment to look at your plate and enjoying what's there, taking a moment to reflect on the conversation that you're engaged in. It's a small mini holiday for your brain that lets your brain kind of reset, let the cortisol um, kind of you know, calm down. And then I'm going to I'm going to wait for that attack with the coffee la last. Yeah. But I'm going to say before the coffee <laughs> part, <laughs> connecting socially. And socially doesn't mean social media. It means truly connecting with the people that you love. Don't connect with people you don't love. That's not going to work out. Connect with the people that you love. Right. Um, if you can't see them, a Zoom like this is fine because a lot of chemicals, we're back to these chemicals, a lot of good chemicals are released when you interact with the people that you love which helps bring down that cortisol. Yeah. And last but not least mm -hmm. is that attack you are, we are hoping to avoid. <laughs> it's not an attack. But limiting stimulants. I'm not saying go caffeine free. I, I think that would be impossible for most of us. But if we're in a state of anxiety, right. it's a good time to limit it because it could trigger your central nervous system and make things worse. Mm -hmm. I like these concepts of staying present also and things like elements that you can control throughout your day. Let's say somebody is having, well, you know, staying active and getting good sleep or are, are things you can plan ahead for in the moment if you're feeling overwhelmed. Do you have any tips or tricks like a breathing technique or something that you can do to kind of just help calm yourself down? Yeah, it's really, really simple. Mm -hmm. The hardest part of remembering to do it. Okay. It's just taking a deep breath. And I purposely say that slowly because usually when you hear it, it makes you want to take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. And so the audience is listening, if you, right? If you take a deep breath, you immediately feel a calmness. And that is not your imagination. There's a lot of science behind that deep breath. It has to do with your vagus nerves and certain chemicals that are released that in that moment just brings down cortisol, releases some calming chemicals and help. And then you might need more than one deep breath, mm -hmm. but if you could just remind yourself to take that deep breath, it can really change the game. Yeah. What would you say the impact diet has on stress, if any? Oh, absolutely. Um, this is a, another hard one because when we're stressed, when we're short on time, we're grabbing and going, right? We're grabbing the fast food, we're grabbing the food that doesn't have the best nutrients and might have some of those stimulants that we, we put in there. So just know that when you're grabbing and going, if you're grabbing um, not the most optimized nutrition, mm -hmm. that's going to worsen things. It's more chemicals. It's more chemicals your body has to deal with. It's more for your central nervous system. It's not going to calm you down. Whereas if you can grab some things that are full of vitamins and minerals, that sends a different message to your body. It sends the message of healing. It sends a message of calming. And at the very least, it doesn't send the message of increased anxiety. So nutrition plays a really big role. How about like alcohol or different beverages, stimulants? Sorry, alcoholic beverages? Mm -hmm. Okay. So alcoholic beverages, initially, it might make you feel like it's calming you. Certainly, right? It has a sedative kind of uh, response. And so it might feel calming. For some people, they feel like especially with social anxiety, it, it makes me feel better. But there is a price to pay after. And that price to pay is that your body now has to detoxify this several hours in, into the next day. And that's an extra burden for your body, which is going to reduce your resiliency and actually can worsen your anxiety the next day. So it feels like it's helping, but the price is actually heavier. Yeah. 
I feel like this is all so very important because even when you're facing other health battles, underlying things like stress can worsen things or help make things better if you're calmer and, and handling things in a different way. That's absolutely true. If you're dealing with any kind of chronic illness mm -hmm. that you are trying to fix, and now you have this underlying fire that you're stoking, right? Your anxiety, your stress, mm -hmm. it is again, going to divert attention away from healing your chronic issue and into stress, stress management. And now, you know, I don't want to you know, make light of this. I know it's very hard to live a stress-free life, That's, right. but it's learning how to manage it, learning to take those deep breaths and understanding that you have limited resources and you want those resources towards health and healing and not just constantly dealing with stress. Do you have anything else that you feel like we should know? Do you think we got it all? I think you've got it all. I just want every listener and every audience to know whatever they're dealing with, it's not in your head and to keep going until you get the answers you deserve. Thank you so much, Dr. E for your time. I greatly appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Praise the Lord. So that's the, uh, the brief uh, stress management that I wanted to everybody to listen to. Uh, mainly, my my talking today is going to be mainly how we can help our pastors so that the stress can be taken out of their life individually as a church. So, uh, as we hear there, that stress is anything that threatens our well-being. It's a just it's a terrible thing for anybody to go through stress because all diseases is built towards that heart attack. And as I'm going, I'm going to talk about that. It is natural. It comes natural, but the way you respond to it helps you helps your health and your well-being emotionally and because everything is connected with it and then everybody everybody different how they deal with stress is different like where i work as a mental health worker so whenever my i sit down with the client and i ask them what led you to commit this type of crime they say oh man joe i was so stressed i didn't have a job i didn't have i was on the street okay when you get to the court did the judge agree with you that you were stressed out no so first thing they get into the program first is to implement program for them talk with them, see how we can take that stress away and rehabilitate them into a normal lifestyle. So as we go, and we can see the causes of stress in ministry leaders. Ministry leaders are always isolated because always isolated in the sense that they take so much into them. And all of us sitting down here, we have a lot of assignment from our church, our family, and religion as a whole. So when you put those things together, it can stress you because you don't know which one to meet. And then the congregation demand anything that happens dead, they are calling him. They are just on the first line, pastor, 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 pastor. And all these things they are responding at the end, who's taking care of them? Who's encouraging them? Where are the strength that they've given away? Where is it going to come from to refer them to come back to themselves again? Then we also see contact availability. Like I said, everybody calls them around the clock. Pastor is always there, emergency pastor is there. And then a lot of time they don't even have anybody that they can call, oh brother, PO. Can you go and see what is wrong with so so brothers, so so sisters? So that can help them and they give you a report instead of them driving around. And all those things build up stress with, for, for them to be running up and down to see everybody and also the welfare of the members too. And a perceived isolation is always true that pastors are always going to be isolated. They are not going to be friends with the world. Personal preference, who am I, who's going to be my friend? Who am I going to work with? What am I going to do? That isolate them. And then also the identity too as a minister that what the world is doing, I'm not going to be part of it. And then you also, another one you can look at is public scrutiny. Oh, he's a pastor. Everybody's going to look at you. They have a very high standard for, for the ministers, for the ministers of the gospel. Because you do anything wrong, oh, imagine what a pastor did. That's going to be the news in the media. That's going to be the posting. So we are very, very careful the way we comport ourselves. So people will not scrutinize us in a very wrong way. And perhaps we are very conscious about that ourselves because everything we do, we want to give glory to God. And then emotional labor, our labor too. We labor in the church so much. And at the end, it, 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 people die, they grieve, and maybe you were so connected, you loved the person, or it was everything to you in the ministry, you're losing him. That can cause grief in your, in your, um, in your life too. And then also, sometimes it takes a while for you to come together. How do we lose such a person? How do we lose it? Those things can cause crisis, personal crisis too, in your life too. And then the most important thing about stress is money family, financial. For example, our pastors, it's like, example, like American pastors. If our pastors are typical American pastors, living in the mansions of millions of dollars, cars, everything they have, 
children's school, everything is paid for. They wake up in the morning. They don't have anything. I'm not going to go to work. I'm not going to work 40 hours. Because every dime you work for, you work for, you have to, they will pay you. If you lose any money, they're not going to give you free time. If a pastor, those things are taken away from our pastors. Or for example, a pastor has a family. And maybe there are young, young adults in the, in the church here, ladies. They say, pastor, take vacation. You come and take care of your kids. Or Thursday, let us just go out. The pastor take vacation and go out. America has all the vanities for you to enjoy with your family. Saturday night, you come back. Sunday, you come to church just to relieve the stress and take it away. Instead of being burdened, work so I can pay my mortgage, my car note, everything. All those things will stress a pastor because there is nothing that is taken out. Even we as a church, I remember some time ago, my overseer told me that, I said, sister, I can't remember the time I took money to pay for gas. And I asked the pastor, how do you, how do you put gas? He said, every Sunday, $500 gas card, $300 gas card. So I haven't even exhausted. So that is just, that is some of the things that can relieve their stress. I invited one of our ministers today to be here. He said, gas is $80. Just imagine if he has had money to buy, I mean, just for have gas, something like that. He would not bother going anywhere because I'm just going to put my gas in the car and go. I'm not paying for that. That takes away that stress of bringing money out of the pocket. What about children in the home? You might have uh, um, teenagers who are very stubborn, trouble in the school, trouble there fighting. That can even stress them. If among us, the young adults, we see them, become friends to them, and we think that we're supposed to work with them and see what is the problem, that can relieve them and take away the stress from them. The Lord will help us at all these things that it will not, that we, we will see the needs of our pastor and meet it in Jesus' name. So the financial pressure is the most important thing, even in the church, as you labor, and you might look and say, what am I laboring, laboring for? Does this work? I left my job, I left my ministry, I'm here working, no money, no all those things. It can press you because you see needs you cannot meet. And out of your pocket, even within the organization that you're living, that can become a very serious stress for you. And then unfair comparison, by God's grace, we are not so, I believe, that we don't compare ourselves with other ministries. We don't look at what they are doing. We are satisfied with the Lord. Whatever we need, we go to the Lord and we pray and tell the Lord. Because some pastors compare themselves. Their wife even forced them. Oh, look at this is so person. Look at how their ministry started before you. They are this, they are this, they are this. No, God has a plan for you also. Likewise, that ministry. So when you put yourself to compare, those can, that can build up stress into your life because you want to do what they are doing. Meanwhile, the resources might not be there. Then you also look at um, unhappy spouse. It's very, very huge. It's also a very huge uh, stressor in the family. If you're a minister, your wife does not agree with you doesn't want to go to church, doesn't want to provide anything that will help you spiritually or build you in the way that you want to go. That can build up stress in your child because there's no cooperation in the family. Does not even want to uh, prepare the children to, to go to church with you or whatever. And then she's constantly nagging, nagging, nagging you. You will not be happy every time you go out or you're going back to your house. Oh, man, going back to my wife. She don't, oh, my God, the nagging is going to begin. She's not even, she doesn't even want to come to church. What is our problem? This build up stress in your life. May God help us that our spouse would not be a problem to us in Jesus' name. And then we see, we say uh, the physical symptoms of stress, aches and pains. When you feel these things in your life, in your body, take time out, rest. Chest pain, feeling like you're, you're racing. Sometimes your heart will be panting, beating so fast. That's a sign of stress, that stress is healing. You have to be conscious. You're wondering why. And then also exhaustion, feeling trouble sleeping, having trouble sleeping. I, I see that they would, where I work, they would give people medication up to like six times. Oh, we have given you everything. I can't sleep. I can't sleep. What is the issue? I can't sleep. I say, what? In my mind, I don't want to say so, then I'm judging them. Does it mean that they cannot just go to bed and close their eyes and pass on without taking medication? So these are some of the things why God said it would not be our portion in Jesus' name. Headaches, when you feel headache, dizziness, you become, you become nervous, shaking. High, stress causes high blood pressure and heart disease. There's some years ago when I was in the state, I was in Minnesota, issue like this we were doing in the church, and they recommended a book for us. The book is Breakout Churching. I was surprised that the leading cause of death among pastors is heart disease. I was surprised. Pastor, that, pastor our overseer asked that, I think it was this year or last year, what is the leading cause of death among pastors? Heart disease. I was surprised myself to see that cause of death among pastors are heart disease. Why? Stress. Stress of the ministry. Dealing with so much. So much is they're not meeting the needs of the ministry. They, they see themselves as failure. That built up stress. And they don't know how. And sometimes they have lost themselves into it. And it causes serious 
health problem for them. The Lord will help us. There will not be a portion in Jesus' name. If there's any way all these things we have neglected, this in the Lord will restore our health in Jesus' name. Muscle tension. Sometimes you feel muscles, or you lifting up your hands. Your I, I, even myself. Sometimes ago I was like feeling pains on my chest when I lift my upper arms. I'm feeling pain. I said, what is happening? I, I started looking at the symptoms of a heart attack. I said, oh, it's not it. I went to the hospital. The doctor looked at me, checked me. They did the cardiomet. He said, no, it's just um, muscle strain. There's nothing. You're so stressed. And by God's grace, I took it. I went and rested. It went away because I. I am one of those that abused sleep. I abused sleep in my life when I was in college. I looked at this. Why am I going to lay down and sleep? My paper is due. I have presentation. I have this and I have lab. I have this to do. So why am I going to lie down? I never rest and never sleep. I, I went on all through my life, even into my matrimonial home. I, I just want to take care of everything and get away, but I didn't know that, that it has have effects of it on my health as you're aging. Until just of recently, I just had a little bit of health issue. I went and the doctor was just telling me. I remember one time he told me that I have a bad news for you. I said, what is it? He said, your, all your minerals is below normal in your body. He said, I'm telling you, people you're working for, they will live when you die. And he told me that as a foreigner. People you're working for, when you die, they will live. Take care of yourself. So I took that, and now that I'm seeing, I said, I never rested. Difficult for me to rest. I don't want to waste my time. My life was triangular, church, school, work, church, school, work. That's all. And then I saw those things that as you age, the type of job you do, how you live your life, it, it also helps your longevity. Sometimes you see somebody, 61 years. I saw a 61 year old woman, and I, I asked the son, Is that your mom? He said, What are you talking about? That's my mom. She looks like a 13 year old. And when I eventually talked with her, she said, Mando, I just thank God I've had the opportunity to not involve myself in things that are stressful. She works with federal government. Guess what she does around conferences? <coughs> Paid for everything. That's why she changes cars every month. So if I and you are like that, what stress will affect our life? When we are 50, you're going to be looking like you're in the when 20s because nothing stress our life. So those things affect our health. And then you see that stomach and that digestive problems as a result of stress. You eat. Things don't digest, your stomach begins to bloat, and all those things are signs of stress. And muscle, t and then um, you see, weak immune system, it weakens your immune system. And then when you go to the hospital, all these simple things, um, flu, begin to cash, whatever comes out, you're getting them. These are a result of lack of stress in our life. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Prolonged effect of it, if you don't manage it, what? Depression, anxiety, builds up, and then panic attacks, sadness, you're withdrawn, you don't have any interest for anything. All these are a result of stress. I know I don't know how many of us remember um, Eddie Young. Uh, he was the maker, one of the maker church pastors in America. If he was still uh, alive, doing what he was doing in his church and was not caught, that man would still be alive. Guess what killed him? I remember he was isolated and sent on sabbatical leave, and that's where he died. I remember what I was talking to my husband about. He said if he was still, alive, if he was not caught, he would still be doing it because he was isolated. Stress built up. And when I was looking into his history, stress killed him. Stress killed him. And then even the U.S. senators, after they've been in the office, being in front of the camera, public, and all those things, and as soon as they lose the election, the life is over. And then they are home. Things that they were doing, no more. All the free money, free health care. Then no more get it again. They have to look for what to do. Guess what? Stress comes in. You hear this, that. Oh, my goodness. He was very, oh, what killed him? What killed him? So, he lost election, and all these things begin to build up because that public life is no more again. So those are some of the stress that can cause insufficient sleep at night. You, you go to bed, next two, two hours, three hours, you have not, you're not sleeping yet. Spiritual dryness, no, no interest at all in the work of God or the things of God. It takes away your energy because you're so stressed out, your emotion, everything. Loss of motivation for the ministry, the people that you're serving. Feeling of isolation and all those things. Even temptation, it lost you into doing things that are ungodly. I mean, that one is not, I didn't even put that as part that is pertaining to us. But sometimes, God forbid, it can be carried away when you lose yourself into it. So stress affects both the mind and the body. A little bit of stress is good, but if you can manage it, you don't have any issue. Where you cannot, it can affect your activities. And then too much stress can cause physical and mental health problems. I mentioned anxiety, panic attacks. A lot of people are on medication because of anxiety, panic attack as a result of stress and depression. And then every one of us, we say, God will help us to cope with our stress in Jesus' name. And then some things that are really that are even causing those things, I just mentioned them. 
And then I, yeah, I, my, I have, a, I'm very sorry, I forgot my flash drive. Percentage of um, statistics that shows ministers, 1,500 pastors leave ministry in a month. I, that shocked me. But though I saw it in the book and the breakout churches that I read about pastors and the ministry stress, it, didn't, it was not this high. I was surprised. And then it talks about 80% of pastors and 84% of the spouses feel unqualified and discouraged in their role as pastors. This is, the, this is the, what the wives, spouses contribute to their husband, and that discourages them, take away their mind. And then 50% are so discouraged that they would leave the ministry if they could have no other way of making in life. Stress build up, like these statistics as a result of stress. Then 70% said they, they, the only time they spend studying the word is when they are preparing for their sermons because they don't have time. They don't have time for the children. They don't have time for their wives. A lot of things, time in the ministry. And then 40%, almost 40% uh, said they have had an extra marital affair since, it, since the beginning of their ministry. That is not part of us in Jesus' name. A seminar, 80% of seminary and Bible school graduates who enter into the ministry will leave the ministry within the first five years. Stress, because they cannot cope with stress. Stress of the ministry. Is this something that I really think about it? I don't think so. I left all. The 90% of pastors said their, semin uh, said, said their seminary or Bible school training did only, fair past did only to poor job preparing them for the ministry. That means they were not well prepared for what they taught them. But when they got into the real life of what ministry is, they said, no, no, no. And again, God has a high standard for them. You look at the old the Bible, it was a high standard. Look at a man like Moses. Moses went through intense stress in his life, a lot. Uh -uh, somebody, uh, I, I believe that as a result of stress, Moses struck that rock twice. And then to the extent that he even asked God that these people, I cannot handle them, I cannot bear their burden by myself. He was so stressed, real intense stress. And God told him, select 70 elders, bring them to me. That was a way for him to take away the stress out of Moses. So God himself is so concerned about our several situation. And the same resources that were available in the Bible for our men, for our brothers like Paul, the same things also available for us today in Jesus' name. The pastors believe that their ministry is negatively affected, affect their families. 80% of pastors say, and which is very true. They say pastors work 40 to 60 hours a week. I said, wow, this is the lot. Where do we get time for the family? That's why marriages are broken. I was even supposed to say one out of three Christian marriages ends up in a divorce. I was surprised. I said, wow, so who, who, where are the Christians? So, so we have a lot to even pray for our pastors as members of the church. So when even our pastors, they spend a lot of time, oh God, oh God, help. They were praying for members of the church because of what they see, and that stresses them. For example, you go to church, your pastor is the one, pastor is the one that will go and open the church door, the sound system, turn on the light, turn up the alarm in the church, nobody. And sometimes you go to church, people are already waiting in the parking lot. It's already 9.50, nobody's in the church, only the pastor in church. For someone like us, when, I, when we had one car, I have to come back from work before we go to church. And then when we get to church, everybody's standing in the church. You can't even find nobody to give the key to open the door because all that stress is pastor. You're rushing. Let us, let us go, let us go. People are already waiting. And two people are already waiting. And they can, for, for example, they could be a new member. And they say, oh, is this the church? Nobody's in the church. Church is locked. You can stress pastor. And members that you cannot trust, you can stress pastor. For example, a family comes to the church. No sister to go and see the person. So for pastor's wife to rest with the family. Pastor wife, the pastor has really want to go and see. Go and visit. Nobody, everything pastor, 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 pastor. It will, it will build up stress in that pastor's life. I remember when I was in Minnesota, where, where, when I went to college, my pastor's wife used to carry uh, four kids, four kids to Minneapolis, almost 35 minutes away to go and carry family and bring it to church. And I was like, oh, they said Minneapolis, Brooklyn Park. Is that where she went to go and pick somebody? That is far. She was doing that. But I took that upon myself. I'll be going there every Sunday and pick up those, those people. Guess what? They were all senior citizens. There's no time I ever went there to pick them. I was late for church. I did that upon myself. Because I saw that she four children, infant, two infants, back and forth, taking them back on Sunday. Younger people were there. Young adults were there. Nobody was paying attention. They all had cars. I was wondering, 
Then I took it upon myself to be every time because it was my way to school. When I'm going back from school, I would stop and see gra- all the grandmas. And then we're reporting, reporting. Then Pastor says, Amanda, Grandma said, you came to see them. So now, since you're doing that, every Friday, come and open these doors. I'll give you the key. Take out money there. Call sister. Ask her what the grandmas are, what the grandma need. That took away all those things from the past, pastor's wife, from doing all that. I took it. It didn't cost me anything. I was thinking I was ready to do. Then pastor, pastor doesn't have to go to church. On Sunday, on Saturday, to be washing the church toilet. We are all there. Our profession was this. And I saw it. I saw somebody that did it, that he had everything in life. If you think of, uh, uh, but thank God, nice, a pastor. I took it upon myself. I did it. When everybody leaves the church, I go back and clean the toilet. Uh, every time I go, this Amanda, we talk about this today in the workers' meeting. What about it? You know, you did this. This Amanda left. Nobody said, okay, you take it upon yourself. You can do that for God. So those are things that can take away the stress from the pastor's life. I talk about the gas card. It's a lot of things you can see that a pastor lacks. You see it, you notice it. You can come if you cannot, or you some brothers that you see you can have privacy with. You build it together and you can provide that need. Pastor's wife doesn't have to go and do this for the sister. You can do. There are so many things we can we can do as a church individually, corporately to just relieve the pastor of stress. Even even in the evening to go and take pastor's children. Let me just take them out to the park. Kids to just run around the park. Pastor can rest, mommy can rest, and then the children just have relaxation and go back home and relax. As you can, even as a single brother in the church, Pastor, I'm going to pick up your clothes for dry cleaning. If we do that, Pastor, that's a huge thing for Pastor. That can take away that stress of money spending time and everything. There's a lot we can do to help our Pastor. Even if it's on Sunday, even even if it's on, uh, I mean, uh, on, on, on Sunday, whatever time, you can just say, Pastor, I'll be driving all of you to church today, just back today. Take pastor to church. You gave him that time. Spend it all day with him. Let him take away that stress of driving or are supposed to visit this. Yes, let him do it when he feels like. There's a lot that we can do to help. My Lord, help us in Jesus' name to see the need of our pastor. Then I saw that when I also read this, um, this I saw statistics of pastors with mental health, ministers, ministry leaders. I was surprised that stress was the first one, 60-something, 63%. I wish I had my, my flash drive. I said, why are pastors... Everything they are topping, 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 everything ministry leaders, topping, topping, high, high, high. I said, My Lord, may God take it away in Jesus' name. Then I wouldn't even talk of those. Then straight, I wouldn't even talk of those that just want to use ministry as a way of making money. Like um, last week, we were just watching something on television with a, it's a, it's a, a British scholar he was talking about American uh, preachers and was playing what, how they deceive people to get money, millions. And then he was asking, What are they living with? $25 million house. I don't want to mention their name. What are they, what are they doing with that? Widows might. Everybody just pay in. Why, why are they getting private jets? What is a pass? It was just, the man was just bringing out a lot of stuff. And I was just sitting down and listening. So then as I was just uh, going to present, I talk about this God in our church. If ever, because we are very humble in what God gives to us, we rather use it to the glory of God. If we have this in the ministry, I don't think any of our pastors will be stressed out. Even when they talk about money, it's already there. And this, this takes away the stress of the people. Oh, my paycheck. Because you, they have to work. They work a lot. There's a lot. I mean, even, even if as a sister, you see a pastor with children all the time, you can help them, even if it's food. Pastor, okay, I'm going to, I brought a pot of stew for you. Oh, I hope you're not. Hey, you can ask, Pastor, what was your best food? You can prepare. That takes away the stress. One of, last, uh, I think two years ago, we had a seminar in this church. One of our leaders was like, the children are grown up and they are married. He said, I was used to coming back home and my children opened the door for me, my wife. Now, when I come back, I'm calling, Mommy, where are you? I'm outside because he doesn't know how to get into the house again. And he said that since they left, a particular sister, he said, every Sunday they have three types of meal she brings to them. He said, that lasts then. So imagine if the wife goes to work, running back, oh, what is daddy going to eat? Come and prepare food go to work, that would really stress her. And then, but that sister has done so much to relieve that stress of mommy coming to cook. And the other one was even saying, oh, you took away all the stress of mommy coming to cook, going to grocery store. He said, I don't know when last mommy went to grocery store. That's a lot, that's a blessing for them there. So if those things, we can sense those needs in our church and we do it individually or any, anything, that will help our pastor a lot. They will not be stressful. Or you see pastor car in the church, Pastor, can I, can I have your key? 
You might ask, what do you want to do? I want to come wash your car. You wash that car and bring it there and pack it for him. Those things, uh, he, will not, he will not get worried. Oh, my car is it, my car is it. Especially the family. If all that we, as pastors, we have, our children, school fees, everything made, our pastors will sleep so sound. They will not have any issue. Because when they wake up, oh, my children's school fees, everything is already there for them. What, what will stress them? I have to go to work 80 hours. I have to work every two weeks. Vacation, you can put, they deny you. What would you do? You still continue to work. So all these things don't stress. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So you're going to look at some of the stress prevention and management. And there was a research that was done by Tom Renner recently. And I, I, it's really, I'm not really surprised because from the breakout church, in, I saw the impact of stress on pastors and ministry as a whole. I saw that spending more time, they said that spending more time in prayer and the word helps them. Helps, some of them said it helps them. And then regain lost vision for ministry. And this will be done through prayer. If you don't have anything stressing, you're so delighted to go to the ministry. That, 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 that minister that I invited, they said, are you coming to the ministry? He said, gas is $80. Huh. Tell what, I mean, I, ju I just left it alone. So I can sense it. Money, he has to go to work. Children, this and that. A lot of money going out. I can't come because gas will cost me $80 to come there. So I just left it alone. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Then avoid comparing yourself with others. I believe our pastors here do not do that. We look unto God. We don't compare ourselves with anybody. Then focus on the positive. Think of things that are good. Fit your mind in the word of God. At Ephesians chapter 4, verse 6. Well, anything that is honest, fit your mind in the word of God. Let this mind be in you. Positive things about yourself. Have fun. Travel. Leave, go, pause it. Take off. Just relax. One day I was choosing to go to vacation, and uh, I went. I, I really enjoyed it so much. I came back and said, wow, this is this white people. They go to vacation on the, on the sea, on the boat. They go with their dogs. They will took, take picture, send it to us at work, and our email. They enjoy themselves in the sea. And then they will give you 150 differential on weekend. They enjoy themselves. If they're not stressed, then they drive big, mighty cars, like the executive cars from the government. And then you see, you're wondering, who, who, who are they coming to investigate? They, you mean, I just wonder. They don't, nothing stress them. And you, you pass through, they, they have event, they invite you to their house, big, mighty boat in their house. What will stress them? And you see where they live. You can pack six cars there. So what is going to stress them? And they give you 50 cents. All the money that comes, they're getting bonus of $40,000, $60,000, and where you're the one that is working, they give you a tiny bit of thing. Nothing stress them. All the stress comes on you. All the stress comes on you. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Cut off, cut off draining relationship. I know we are very sensitive about relationship, who we talk with, who we go out with, or whatever we do. So anything that takes away your, drains you. If you have a friend that's always draining you negative things, please take, cut, cut that person off. And then express gratitude, thanksgiving to God in whatever it is in your life, in your church as a ministry, helps a lot. And then do activities that energize you. If you like to run, if you like to go to gym, I don't like going to gym because it's, uh, I just have a negative this thing about it. And I don't see how it's going to change because that's what I see every time I go there. It's a place that people just come come there to come and steal people's wives, love people's wives, commit all sort of sin, all sort of perversion. Nothing good you're going to see at gym. If you don't like it, go to the field, football field. Go to basketball court. Go and walk around because it's going to tempt you. I say, this is why. And they're sitting down there just waiting for, uh, mind your business. You're walking out. Why are you coming to come and ask me, do you need help? I don't need help. So I do, I'm, nothing is going to change that notion in the gym because it's not a good place to go. If you have one, put one in your house and spend your time there. By the time you finish, you'll be so, you'll be so I see my husband always running, always running up the steps in the house. I say, let's go to the end right go this thing. So get in better physical shape. Eat good. Maintain workout. When it's late, they say when it's 5 o'clock, don't eat anymore. I, I, for someone like me, I'm not a feeder at all. I don't like to feed. But if I put up my mouth with a cup of milk, I'm okay. So I don't care about it. So feed good. In the evening, they say after 5 o'clock, no more carb. Get fruit in your fridge. Get nuts. Whatever you like to eat that is light, that would not congest you so you can have a good sound sleep, please do that. Walk out. Rest and sleep. Commit. I mean, it's a commit to have this ritual of, a spirit of servant. We are all servants to the Lord. We are serving. We are committed to it. Nothing will take away that from us. I mean, last two weeks, I was just doing evangelism, and I saw an uh, Afghanistan uh, family. They came to America three months ago. I didn't know. So when I, the things they were telling me, and I said, oh, you came three months ago? 
They didn't have anything in the, in the house, nothing, not even water, food. And it, 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 it was dragging us to come, come, come. We followed her into the house. And I say, as Christian, we cannot see this and neglect. Even though we are, uh, they are Muslim, whether they come to church, there's nothing we can do. We have to provide for them. We have to go out. We went to uh, Sam's club. We bought all the things that they needed for them. Whether they come to church, they can't speak English, but we couldn't close our eyes and pass. I mean, when did she come to America? Bottles of an anti-anxiety medication. I said, what? They're going to destroy this woman because... I just left. I said, who's your caseworker? I tried to connect with the caseworker. I eventually spoke to her. I told them the problem that the woman have because that's a result of stress, different environment. Already on medication, before you know that woman is going to be knocked out, all sort of health. Already she's having, I mean, she's already acting somehow. I just felt so bad. So those are some of the things that you can see. And they were so happy. I found food bank for them. That took away the stress of the man and the wife and the children. They were so happy. So those are some of the things that even if you see, even within our pastor, there's nothing wrong in shopping fruits to our pastor's house. A basket of fruit. You go to a Costco, they are there. I mean, Costco, Sam's Club, pick it. All sort of fruit, different type. Pastor, I brought this for you. Pastor can have it in his house. If you want to prepare in a bowl and give it to pastor, is they call it a, T, a TCS food. That means you can in that seven, seven days. Pastor can have that for seven days. Pour it in a bowl of cereal. You can eat it with crackers. Whatever you want to take it, we can take it. It relaxes you. You just sit down and relax. And then when we eat, you're so tired because of you're so stressed from work. After we finish eating, next thing is to sit down and then we doze off. No, no activity. Where does the food go to? It builds up in the tummy. It's not digesting because you're not moving. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And then pray for your community. In our church, we pray for our church. Because when it's well with our church, our community, it is well with us. So we don't have to neglect that. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And then we saw that scriptural support for stress reduction. We saw that even, even our Jesus Christ, he said, come unto me, all ye that are labor. Jesus Christ was stressful. He was stressful. Imagine him walking miracle. And then trying to preach to the people, his own people, they did not accept the gospel. Wouldn't that stress him? He stressed him. He stressed Jesus Christ. But what did he do? You find that he always take time and go and have a place to pray and spend time by himself. That was a way of him re-energizing himself. Then we also talk about Paul Apostle. Paul Apostle, he said, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that the labor is not in vain. He faced through stress. Somebody that from all sort of problem, from fire, from, I mean, hot, all sort of things with Paul. Paul was so stressful. And then you look at, you look at, say, that's why I say, cast all your care upon me, for I care for you. May the Lord help us that when stress overwhelms us, that we look upon the Lord. And then he said, maintaining of well-being. Though if we are children of God, no matter what, that would not change. Your identity would not change for anything. We are children of God. And then we also learn to have joy. Great joy for yourself. For me, I like I like comedy. I watch comedy a lot. And there are good comedies you can just sit down and be laughing. And you see things, sometimes they just send it to my phone. I say, this is really funny. And I just can't do. Watch comedy. Spend time around healthy people. Your family. Have fun with your family. And then sometimes we just I just put on TV and look at this Bible, American uh, critics, criticizing other people, like uh, Jeannie, Jeannie Yet. You know, those people, and the things they say, it's so funny. I just be laughing. So create fun for yourself. Rest because God created rest. Sleep a lot. In that video we listened to, he said, do not underrate the power of sleep. Sleep is very, very important. It's now that I'm trying to go. I said, I didn't abuse sleep. I abused because I said it was a waste of time. Even Pastor Dad had to talk to me about my sleep. I abused. I said, it's a waste of time for me to go and lie down, wake up. My thing is still there. I haven't done it. Let it go. I learned to let it go now. Let it, let it be there. If you want, let it be there. I learn it, even though I sometimes say, no, 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 no. I need this, this. But yeah, it's very important. Rest. Take rest no matter what. Rest, please. The Lord will help us to rest in Jesus' name. And then, yeah, I talk about sleep. Then diet and exercise. I said about that. Exercise, good food, vegetable. We like fufu. There's nothing can change our culture. We like fufu. We're still going to eat fufu with soup. Eat fufu with soup with vegetable. Let it be very, very little. But eat a lot of vegetable. We don't we don't drink here. That doesn't matter to us at all. The Lord will help us in Jesus. And nourish your body by exercising. The Lord will help us drink a lot of water. Learn to be silent and still. That helps the Lord. In Luke chapter 5, verses 15 and 16, we talk about 
uh, because our faces will be there. If you, in your personal time, you can read about that. Great outlet to avoid stagnation. Great outlet to avoid stagnation. Always find something to do. Don't just be there because something is coming up. Church program is coming up, not going to anywhere. You have to create something. Go out and come back. Church, church event can really overwhelm you. So I won't be going to a convention. But if you don't have any way to go, we are all there for the work of God. But by the time you know your indirectly dealing of stress is good. I'm not saying don't go. Go. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Seek to give your burden to the Lord. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So learn, learn to have realistic expectations. You don't hope for what you know you're not going to achieve in the next five years. Whatever you measure, let it be realistic. This is the expectation, and this is what I'm going to get. If you make an expectation for a large something, you're not going to get it. So look, work within, within your uh, uh, expectation. Six, seek to resolve things that can be accomplished quickly and easily. Quickly and easily, that would not stress, that not build up stress or with anybody. And then learn to manage your time by saying no. There's nothing wrong if you're so overwhelmed and you can say, I cannot make it today. Rest. God knows your body. Your body is telling you it's time for you to rest. Rest. I can tell, I can tell signs of stress in my body. I know when to pull out very, very quickly instead of creating health issues. Cemeteries are full of indispensable people because of stress. Yeah, because of stress. They, could, they couldn't manage it. A lot of them, I can tell you a lot in the wall that have gone as a result of stress. And when I talk about it in my house, I say, if they were still around to do it, they would not have died just because they caught them and stress builds up. That's what took them. And it's nothing true. As I was stressing, I found the Lord. Periodically disconnect from the work in the church. Periodically disconnect from the work in the church too, so that your mental health, your mental health is very, very important. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. None of us here, cut off your phone. There are sometimes you need to cut off your phones. You don't have to answer. Call. My husband was saying that maybe on Sunday, every Sunday, everybody has to drop their phone <laughs> in the corner of the house. No phone, no email, nothing for whatever. And I was saying that maybe we have to get to that. Because it's just a Sunday, like it's really the children. So I said, maybe we have to get to that. I agree with you. I agree with you. So the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Participate, have, have, participate with other pastors, network with other pastors, encourage one another. That helps to relieve our strength. You can hear what they are doing that can help you, that can help your ministry in Jesus' name. And then we will not forget that the same powerful resources that was available for Jesus is also available for us today. Even the man of God is also available today. I mentioned Paul. I mentioned Moses. Moses went through stress. I mentioned David. Ah, David's soul was too much because all the psalm in the Bible, oh, God, have mercy. I'm distressed. David, who? Somebody to run for 16 years from an enemy? Oh, my goodness. The mercy of God was with him. If the mercy of God was with David, the mercy of God will be with us today in Jesus' name. And then we talk about, uh, um, who is again? Um, Job, Elijah. Imagine somebody that did a miracle. He would have been so happy and full of spirit and power again. What did he do? As soon as Jezebel threatened him, he ran away. He ran away to where he could not help himself. God has to find a way to feed him through revenue. So that's that's how, that's how stress can be. Imagine someone like Elijah that not see death. I was like, wow, why would this man? I would have been so bold after I did that. I would have stood just but he ran away. So that is it. And one time when we had a, a seminar on this uh, stress, they said that Elijah had mental health. I said, no, not Elijah. Elijah had mental health. And they talk about stress in his life also. And I look at it, it was true. Because he ran away to where he could not help himself. It was so stressful. That was why he ran away. And, and God had to help him. And then at the end, God is always trust in God's faithfulness. God is always faithful. There's nothing that we look up unto him. And you cry unto him that God would not do. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Then God is always, I say it again, he's always, he will, ever, he will never forsake him. That song that our sister read, he said, in my hands I fold thee, in my hands I hold you. Sweet is thy promise, I will never forget you. The Lord will help us to hold on to the promise of God in Jesus' name. I, I, have, um, I have a reference. I have references here, but I will paste it in the AMF page. And then also uh, we listen to the eight minutes presentation that we had. And then there's a book. Um, this is the book that I had. It's called The Stressless Life, Experiencing the Unshakable Presence of God. Can, my, uh, can you put it up for us, for us to see? It's a book.
this stressless life, experiencing the unshakable presence of God's indescribable peace. Praise the Lord. Is it up? Okay. Okay. So, I think. That's the book up. The book. Okay. That's the book. It's very, it's very, very good. It talks a lot about ministry pastors. It's very, very important if you can lay hands on it and buy it and read. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Ah. Yeah. 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 Praise the Lord. In the, and then another one is a breakout churches. It talks about pastor health in their ministry, what affects the pastor's health a lot. That one. So praise the Lord. Let us pray. Our Father and our Lord, we thank you, we worship you, Lord, because you're a God of wonders. And Lord, thank you for the month of April, the month of stress, awareness month. And Lord, you have spoken this to help us in our ministry. Father, we are praying that where we have failed because of not knowing or overwhelmed with the work of the ministry that's caused problems in our health, we pray that the blood of Jesus will heal us in Jesus' name. And Lord, as a church, individually, corporately, as we've heard, oh Lord, Help us, give us the grace to serve our pastor, to help them, Lord, because they are working for you, that we also help to relieve, that will prolong their life, their health, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, as we listen, O oh Lord, let us be the doer of it, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray that nothing will plague our pastor's health in Jesus' name. As they labor for you, O oh Lord, you replenish them, you will heal them, you give them good health. They will be strong. They will not die young, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. They will outlive their age, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Help us mostly as a person, Lord, in Jesus' name. Can we clap one second? Let's thank God.